today I'm going to give you a quick update on my vintage machine and show you what I've been sewing this week as well. Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. Today I'm just going to do a quick update first of all on my vintage machine because I couldn't believe the amount of responses I got and comments and suggestions on my last video. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to link it above up in the cards. But about the vintage machine that I acquired, it didn't cost me anything actually, but I paid someone just to fix something on the pedal. So I thought it would be a win-win. I thought it would be a heavy duty machine that I could just use and it would be really robust. But I'm having a few problems with it. The original problem, which I thought was the, t the upper tension, it turned out to be the bobbin tension and the fault was not with the machine, it was. Yeah, it was with me. I'd wound the bod bobbin in the wrong way round in the shuttle and then put it in because I'm used to a top loading bobbin in my digital machine and so I just I just threaded it up wrong and I thought that the issue was the top tension. Turns out it was the bottom. So I fixed that, it's all up and running and it's fine on the sewing front. My issue is that I only have the one foot. So I have the original presser foot, but I don't have a zipper foot with it. And I only have one bobbin. So I've looked on eBay, I've looked on Google to try and find um, bobbins which will be the right dimensions for the shuttle based on the dimensions of the one which is already in there because the bobbin is actually smaller than the one I have for my digital machine which means you have to change it more often it runs out of thread. So ideally I'd like to have a few so then you can just pop that in and then it doesn't interrupt your sewing. But I can't find the parts for it. Now, when I've looked online, there are lots, if you type in like vintage machine, sewing machine parts, you'll find parts for Singer machines, but this particular make is really tricky. You can find a machine with accessories, but finding actual accessories just for that machine, it's proving a little troublesome. Now, I don't really want to have a machine where I can only use one bobbin because then it's having to like change the thread you do you empty it because ideally you're not supposed to then just top it up with different color thread if I'm sewing two different things then I want to be able to have like one with navy and one with black one with white just ready to go like I have at the moment with my modern machine but I I can't and, and I know some people have linked um, shared links but they are maybe from American sites and some bobbins are plastic ones made from China and I've also read reviews to avoid those ones because they either break or they're not the actual size that they say that they are and then of course if, if it's coming from China I'm probably gonna have to wait about four weeks for it to arrive. So I don't know what to do. I, there's so much love for vintage machines and I want to love the machine but I'm also used to kind of the mod cons of my digital machine, but that does struggle with my heavier fabrics, which is what I mentioned in my previous video. So, someone recommended the Singer Heavy Duty machine, which is a metal machine. It's a modern machine, but it's a metal machine and it copes really well with heavy fabric. And I'm looking to sew canvas and fleece. This is all for my husband's cosplay. So they are thicker fabrics than like dressmaking fabrics. So I was just mucking around with the machine. I had some fabric which I showed in a previous haul and it cost me like three pounds for a meter of this. So I wasn't worried about um, if it went wrong or anything. So I was trying to do a V-neck on a top. And can you see, it's just crinkled it all up. And when I was sewing it, it just, it just, it just gathered it all up. I, like I said, I've tried to loosen off the tension, but it really didn't like it. Whereas when I've tried to sew through some canvas and I've folded it in half, that's gone through no problem at all. So it seems like it would cope with heavier weight fabrics more than just a regular dressmaking fabric. The vintage machine seems to struggle with lighter weight fabrics. And when it comes to heavier weight fabrics, it's fine, except sometimes the reverse button sticks. But, um, it doesn't have extra bobbins and it doesn't have a zipper foot so when it comes to making the trousers that I need to make I don't have a zipper foot so I'm going to have to then do the fly front on my regular digital machine and I don't know if that's going to struggle with that. So tell me down below in the comments what you have. Do you prefer vintage or digital or just a mechanical one? Also, does anybody have the Singer Heavy Duty um, machine? Because I know there's different models. I'm not entirely sure the difference between them, whether it's just the amount of stitches one does over the other. Generally, I've seen good reviews about them, that they are workhorses, that they will go through really heavy fabrics and sew really well. 
and they're quite easy to get parts for. So at the minute I am being, being swayed down that path, but also I don't want to neglect the vintage machine that I do have, but I don't know, it's, um, it's a tricky one. Oh, and as a side note, in my previous video when I showed the dials and various things like that, the button that I pressed in was not a locking stitch, it dropped the feed dogs down, and I learned that from research. Someone recommended you go looking on YouTube. Another update, I was sewing cork with the with the machine that I had. That was when I ran into the problems because the bobbin ran out, re-threaded it wrong, and then it wouldn't sew. So this was the closet case patterns belt bag. I added belt loops on at the back because the pattern just has a slit where you just, I thought that would just tear the cork. I mean, it's pretty basic pattern and it's not great because it doesn't give you any instructions, but. So I've inserted the card pocket here and I've sewn it and then turned it the right way around. And now this here, I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't turn you don't get that, although I clip the curves, it doesn't get that nice smooth feel. Being the cork, it is a little bit lumpy and bumpy. I wasn't sure what to do about the flap because it is, there's no overlay, so it kind of came out here. So I did just fold it over and stitch it down, like quite badly stitched it down. And here, I don't know if you can see, it has really sort of roughened up the cork and it is, it's rough and the stitching's not that great. And originally I was gonna just put a popper in it, but I don't like it. But it's just a trial run. But I would say make your own pattern. Don't go for that one. I have four makes just to quickly show you. They are all the same pattern, which is the Rowan Tea by Miss Susu patterns. Don't know if they pronounced right. It's one I've made previously. It is a free PDF and it's for my daughter. So it's a kimono style t-shirt. You can have the option of long sleeves and a pocket. Obviously it's not the kind of weather for long sleeves and I didn't worry about the pocket. So, version one, all the chickens. Version two, all the strawberries. And version three, the four leaf clovers. This was all done on my regular sewing machine with a stretch stitch. Um, I did not use my overlocker because I don't really know what I'm doing with my overlocker and I find that the seams are quite bulky when I do that. And it was fine. Um, some of them I have zigzagged on the outside and others I have just left that plain. They are all jersey fabrics from BST Fabrics and I use less than a meter on each one. The final thing that I'm showing you today is something that I've made for my daughter. Oh, it's fallen off. And it is da -da, New Look 6505. It's the tunic top with sleeves. I made it in a size 10 according to her measurements. So it was, sorry. So it was a good size for her. Here is the tunic. It has a button um, loop at the back and it's just a slip on thing. And it has a tight, let me just put it on, tight waist uh, with a bow. I haven't put belt loops on because my daughter hates it. So I gave up because I spent all afternoon making it for her. And although she initially liked the fabric, she still does like the fabric because it's cotton. She won't wear it because she's there's no stretch to it and she can't get it off. It's too tight and wriggles in and out. It fits her fine. I will try and get some footage of her in it. And I said, if she doesn't give me the footage, I won't let her have cold pizza in her lunch for school trip tomorrow. This one also is weird because it has um, lower facings. So, it's face so when I, I didn't really look, so I cut the facings out and interface them, thinking it was for around the neck. No, that's bias binding. Around the bottom, there's interfacing around the bottom hem. It was really bizarre. And then when I sewed the front and the back together, it didn't, it was actually too small to actually fully go around the hem. So I just turned it up twice and just top stitched it. Oh, that was fine. I just thought that was a bit bizarre. Um, I also did add, cause she moaned that it was too tight to get on and off. I did put a side slit in, side split. She was having none of that. So it should have belt loops on, but because she says she doesn't like it and she isn't gonna wear it, I have given up. So this is probably gonna be donated to the charity shop and hopefully someone will appreciate it and actually wear it. Over on my mannequin, I do have the top half of a McCall 7432. 
but I will show you more about that in my next video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe if you haven't done so already because it really encourages me and if you enjoyed it, give it the old thumbs up and I will see you again in my next video.